contest the claim. Because, the, because okay, he's speculating. Because here's the thing: this is all based on speculation. Because because this person because hold up, because he's just saying that there is research that shows that this was put into this yeah. based on the current events at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't there before. That's a huge claim. Yeah. What I mean is what I mean is like claim. it's like you have to obviously from the point of view like that's, that's, the, scholar, said, that's the scholarly you, consensus. And I'll tell well, you why. I'll tell you why. In no. academia, uh -huh. you you have to set aside the supernatural. You have you have to. I'm just saying, academia approaches these issues from a secular perspective. So when the, where there's a prophecy, a, a, an academic will say, okay, how do we explain a prophecy um, in a in a non supernatural way and the only way re in reality to explain that prophecy is to say that it was written either at the time that those events happened or after oh, after okay and so, there are also linguistic there is no. also linguistic evidence to back that up no linguistic evidence yeah and what would my dad be so as i described earlier there are so how i've understood the the um conclusions raised by the and i'll have to go back and look at all scholars, these because you're just bringing stuff up is that there are there are like linguistic um, techniques, okay, turn, so turns of phrase. The terms that are used in this part of the book are not used are later. There, are later, yes. and they kind of like then, yes, linguistically prove that this was a later language. The, sa the uh, same way, for example, the previous style. The same okay. way we could look at a newspaper from 200 years ago okay. and look at it today, and today you'd be able so to tell the, the, that one's newer language. than the other. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now that's a claim that I haven't looked into, so I can't speak to that. Sure. But that's your claim. Yes. Okay? And um, so that's why I was saying that when you bring something like this up, it has to be backed up with yes. something very solid. But your main thing is that this is just something that only is linguistically because it's different. Yeah. Maybe there were two different authors at the same time. That's another way that this could be explained. However, you're gonna because now the burden of proof is on you. Yes. Because of the claim that's so big. But your your one evidence, I haven't looked into this evidence, but that's your claim. Yeah. We'll go forward from there because I don't want to keep. Yeah. But the, the other part there. you're asking me about what is the motivation? This is something unknowable. But we, I'm happy to speculate. Okay. It's a fun, I think yeah, it's, we can speculate. It's a right? nice exercise. I mean, like, no. Look, we are human, so we do something. We don't do something self-destructive. Are you saying that Cyrus was self-destructive? Why, why do you Why say the king? why he was given up okay. his property? That's like uh, that's like saying charity is self destructive. Ah, so then say it. So you're saying he was charity. He was doing the right thing. Okay. So he was doing the right thing because he's a Zoroastrian king that he's mentioned before. That the Zoroastrian religion has some moral, uh, you know, aspect where this could be from his good thoughts, belief. good words, good deeds. There we go. So these are the principles of Zoroastrianism that he was following. However, that excludes the other Zoroastrian kings from following those rules. Why was he different from the others? Or but, not every, but not every Christian lives to the same standard. But then that the, but the that's point why, is... That's why he's, he's considered but my the greatest point, figure of Persian history. That's kind of the weak point here. Because the weak point is that that one person who was prophesied did something that nobody else does. But you're, you're, you're saying, no, that doesn't matter because that was later edition. Saying, I, don't, I don't believe it was I, later I, I would also consider the political issues of that Israel was part of similar because like, it was propaganda it was it was it was also at the mercy of Babylon who had just been destroyed wait, 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 and it was like hold on hold on just a second because in those same courts was Daniel was employed in those same court they were all Magi Magi you know who Daniel who, you know who Daniel was yeah, yeah, yeah. okay he was Nebuchadnezzar was right yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that right yes. so he was teller of dreams right yes that's astrology Okay, that's called uh, uh, like Meseroth, not yeah. astrology in the Bible, it's called Meseroth. Meseroth is like, um, you know, prophesying, yeah. okay, telling the dreams. So why was he able to do that? Because this is something that came from that tradition, because the people who were uh, what they call um, wise men, you know, the three men, yeah. they were called wise men, but they knew the stories in the heaven, because they used to be watching the stars and yeah. the constellations. I can, that's I can talk a little bit about the about the Magi as well if you want. Okay, but I'm going to, so, I'm going to finish your point. Oh, yeah, okay, I can finish my point and you keep your point in mind, okay? So right. I want you to address it. Yeah. So the Magi came from there because they knew the story of the stars. Yeah. And what was the story of the stars telling them? The king of the Jews is born. Why? 
The stars don't say do anything. Yeah, it does. No, it, well, that, I get what well, you mean. That we'll was, that was, we'll that was yeah, I get what you mean. No, no, it does. And I can tell you, because you don't know what the star of the story is, I can tell you what it is. But I will, that's a very different subject. But we're going to go there later. But that story, what it's telling you is, if, if they were ingratiating themselves to the Persians, why would the Persians feel the need to come and ingratiate themselves to the Jews? Uh, they, it, but it wasn't specifically the Jews. That's why. I'm, that's why I raised the Cyrus Cylinder because this was a blanket um, policy. It wasn't just for the Jews. The Jews painted it that way because who else are they going to talk about? They they want to support their claim about their God making prophecies and picking this man to help them and so on. But he did the same for everybody. The Cyrus Cylinder says all captives. It doesn't say the Jews. It doesn't even name the Jews as one of them. point about the Magi? Because I'm going to go a little bit more into that. I think Jovan was just going to make a, make a point. I'm finished my point. I'm just interested. Oh, I wanted to hear what you had to say. So, so, in, uh, yeah, so, so in Zoroastrian theology, there is the, a prophecy. It became a prophecy. But there is uh, a discussion about the coming of one who brings benefit. Um, the word used is a seoshiant, which is translated loosely as one who brings benefit. This became uh, understood to be the coming of some figure in the future. Actually, how I understand it is that there is a seoshian in you, in you, in me, in you. If you are ready to master yourself and transcend your humanity. However, this became um, like a seen as a, a prophecy about a future, a, a figure coming in the future, like a savior figure. Now we're talking about, you know what he's, he's going around, dancing around? The birth of Jesus. No. Because they came to say, because they, they, the, they said the king of the Jews, because he was the savior. So what he's saying is, uh, let me just uh, summarize what, he, what you're saying. In fact, I will, I will, I will, even, I will even argue, once you've made your point, I will even argue that the, uh, the coming of Cyrus delegitimizes uh, Jesus. But you go ahead. As a savior, as a savior yes. figure. But you go ahead. Because he was called a savior? There's more to it than that. But you, okay, you go ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll and, I'll, and I will give you the name of a scholar on this particular point. Uh, we're going to have a lot of debates, I guess. Um, <laughs> what, what, what his point is that, because they came for that figure who was uh, this, uh, what was the word that you used for? It's in all of us, the Saoshian. Uh, Saoshian. What does that mean? Uh, one who brings benefit. Okay, one who brings benefit. What, what it is a, a, a synonym to like a savior. Yes. Okay, synonym, right? Okay, I think I use the right terminology there. So that is your, is your cop out of the story that we are talking about because this. Now, how do we know this is not a retrospect that what you're talking about right now? Because the, the word Saoshian is recorded in a language which was already dead for a thousand years before the name Jesus was ever uttered. Fine. Okay. That's a very good argument. That's a good one. Now, tell me what the definition of Saoshian is because you said it's in all of us. Because a savior... I that's how is I interpret it. But however... I'm saying within the religion, no, the thing is I'm not a, a Zoroastrian in the conventional sense. Okay. In the religion of Zoroastrianism, Saoshian is a person who will come in the future. A person or all of us have the No, no, no. I, I'm, that's my claim, that we all have it. All right, got you, got you, got you. That one figure will come in the future, like um, in an eschatological sense. So that brings me back now to the scholars that I'm talking about. Yeah. So uh, one mention that I mentioned earlier, Sebastian Kothavon wrote, Iranian themes in Jewish eschatology. So the idea, like, let's think of it like this. In all of the Jewish canon, the word Messiah is used over 30 times. But none of those instances is referring to the one that they call Moshiach, who is still to come. Never is that word used for that one. So the word Moshiach, the word Messiah, came to mean something different over time. So once upon a time, it was just someone who was chosen for a particular task, an anointed one, someone who was anointed to do something. But eventually, it, yeah, but it, eventually it acquired um, a much deeper meaning about someone who will come eventually at the end of days to save all the people. So, so, so Jesus name the Christ there is that's why there's different names of Jesus okay. he's called the mighty God he's called the Savior he's called a lot of things yeah. so you can't just say that only this is Jesus no that's one of his 
the, the Messiah is not the only thing that Jesus is called. called the Christos is the Greek. Christ yeah. comes from the Greek Christos, yeah, Christos, right? The same word is used for Cyrus. Okay. So, but is it used in the sense like, okay, so, so that means that Cyrus, did he save the world of their sins or anything else? He didn't. Why, did he? why, is, that, why is that relevant? Because that's what Jesus was supposed to be. According to what? According to, okay, so uh, if it was not a universal person, Jesus, why would these uh, Zoroastrian magi come and, and prophesy and come to give him homage that's given to a king? So you, you, alluded, you alluded to the fact that Zoroastrian, Zora, sorry. I'm agreeing. With okay, hold on, I haven't come back yet. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> He's agreeing with you. <laughs> so so you, allu you alluded to the fact that the Zoroastrians were... Uh, or Magi were astrologically uh, so sensitive, yeah? No, no, no. no. They were, they, the whole thing, a Magi, is where the word magic comes from. Yeah. We're also called the wise men. I said the people who were considered wise men were the astrologers right. to the kings because they right. knew the story of the stars. Yeah. And the story of the stars told them that the king of the Jews is born, not the king of the Jews only, but the savior of the world is born. So and that's why they took the yeah. very dangerous journey. In those days, it wasn't easy to travel unless it was a necessity, yeah. especially with some goods like gold and myrrh and, and yeah. this to go homage. That's a big deal. So big, big, big I deal. would, I would not uh, bet my house on those three figures being Zoroastrians. Ah. I would also even consider the possibility that they were Mithraists, also Magi, also their priests, also known as Magi, also astronomers, astrologers, whatever you want to call it. Um, like the imagery of Mithras in the Roman Empire, for example, is always accompanied by depiction of the 12 um, constellations of the zodiac. You know the first religion, okay, Hinduism is all based on 12 constellations, you know that. Sure, sure. Okay, all the ancient religions are all based on the 12 constellations. So where I'm going with this is, according to their like astrological calculations, they were expecting the arrival of a figure. A figure. In their case, whether it was a Seoshian or, or Mithras, because don't forget, the birthday of Mithras is what people celebrate in the West as Christmas Day. Uh, yeah, but that's not the day of the birth of Jesus, is No, it? but I don't know if we have any evidence or any clues yes, in the Bible about what time of year this is all uh, happening. Yes, we do. Okay, and we'll get to that. That is why we are having this conversation. My deeper point is going to come to that, okay. but we haven't gotten there. So, the reason why I, I entertained the idea that these three wise men were Mithraists is because they went to see the Roman governor first. Yeah. He was why? he was in, it was him who instructed them to go and uh, investigate, right? Okay, because they're because they're foreigners and they are diplomats. They are okay. very high. Yeah, yeah, they have to get the official arrival, permission to go and do something. They cannot just go in somebody's territory and just nonchalant yeah, go I, and I do agree, that. I but agree. They, but that. they were but if they were Zoroastrians, they were coming on behalf of the religion of the enemy. Yes. Mithraism was already a well-established religion in the Roman Empire at the, at the time of these events, <laughs> right? Do you, do you agree okay. with that? So Magi were also very highly respected. Sure. Okay. So because they're not coming as an army, they're coming on camels as a, as a, just a caravan. Uh -huh. They're not a threat. So they need to come and pay homage to the governor first and say, here, here we are. Is it okay if we go and we are here for this and this is our purpose? Yeah. But what, and, the, and is that okay with you? But by, by raising the possibility that they were Mithraists, I am decoupling this narrative from Zoroastrianism. Yeah, and from uh, Cyrus uh, and from all those, <laughs> so I have all those people. Yeah. To jump over now. It's okay, we'll, um, we'll get there. Yeah. I, 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 I might hurt your feelings with this comment. Okay. But, because I'm agreeing with your point regarding, I don't necessarily think it would delegitimize de 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 Jesus. Especially because that point in the New Testament. Oh, no, oh I, I, I mentioned I was going to delegitimize, but this isn't what this isn't what I was talking about. But yeah, go on. Because I'm keeping I'm keeping in mind that like at the point of the New Testament, I mean Jesus was born, the Pharisaic system was failing at that point. Like Israel at that point was a failing state, and that so the exact the, the what you imply is like as Cyrus being. The savior figure but 
what he established or what he attempt to create with it. I didn't role. call him the savior figure. Whatever, the like, Bible calls him. The yeah, 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 yeah. But but you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able but to. He, do... But what would you call him? No, he wait, was wait, a wait, 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 wait. So it's like what? Because the system that Cyrus tried to create or help Israelites create had failed in the time of Jesus. Like right. he, he, it was, it was, it was, it was no longer sufficient. Yeah, but what, what does that prove? Oh, I see. It's, 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 like, it's, like, some, it's like he, he wouldn't be the end of all savior of anything because his system failed, and so that's that's that's. Yeah, so your point is that Cyrus isn't like a savior of the world or the people. No, no, no. He was a savior of the time. Uh, yeah, like he was, right, he, time, he served yeah, the purpose of, course, of the time. Of he, he the purpose. But his system also failed. Yeah. It also failed. His empire also vanished. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it was. It was, it was a, I would, I would argue that it's, it's still there in one form or, or another. I mean, one form or another. Yeah, but if Jesus hadn't done that, so, it would have died. But it's the only one that is still there from that day. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay. What do you mean by that? What do you mean I mean, by that? like, where's the Roman Empire now? Well, that's not true. Actually, you still have Catholicism, which is also an, 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 a relic of the Roman Empire and stuff like that. But you, 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 you have loads but, but, but the of Persian relics. Empire predates that. Until. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, what I mean like is like, years. what I mean is like, the Pharisaic system had failed. Like the the the, the Persian kind of. The Persian As in, version what, what the of Persians Judaism. had implemented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was what they it had failed. implanted it, into it, Judaism. Yeah, yeah, it failed. Had failed to sustain it. It, it. it failed. Like, like Jesus, like Israel would have been out of existence if Jesus had not. Oh yeah, that's a good point. If Jesus, if Jesus, if, if Jesus had not, but they rejected him. No, no, no. If Jesus hadn't done what he did and Christianity hadn't been the thing. There could be the argument made that Israel would just wouldn't exist and that, that, that entire faith. Why, but why does Israel depend on Jesus? Because when the Romans destroyed the second temple, that was the end of, that was the end of Israel. Judaism. That was the end of Judaism. Un until the Jewish people had decided that they were going to do their best to codify the, the Pharisees' teachings, if they hadn't done that, the Pharisees would have been destroyed entirely. And it's like... So if the temple hadn't been destroyed, the Pharisaic teachings wouldn't have been preserved. But what's that got to do with? What's that got no, to do I mean, it's like, it's like the, the 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 Persian ideas of Judaism at that point was a failure. Like Second Temple Judaism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was a complete failure, and Israel at that point was a failed state. And it's like something you have, obviously you have to account for that because obviously if you're assuming that Cyrus is like. Yeah, the, the guy, guy yeah, yeah. then his his system. No, but you see, like I, his... I'm not looking at it from a divine perspective. No, when I, I say I'm, I'm saying he was his... the guy. I don't mean he's going to save all of mankind. No, it I'm... was just propaganda. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, saying but... they believed it at the time. But how can you then say he de delegitimizes Jesus when when okay, when, now, when, okay, when, okay, when now you're asking me a when... new question? So Lisbeth S. Fried, writing in the Harvard Theological Review, 